67 indicates that the constellation of Ophiuchus will play a role. The next image moves us a little bit further ahead of time. It shows the eight-rayed star, the eight-spoke wheel at the top with the banner. And it also shows the tree of light being impinged upon by some monster. In the sky, if you drew a line from the stinger of the scorpion to the tip of Sagittarius's arrow, the line would go directly through the center of the galaxy. The space between Scorpio and Sagittarius becomes very, very important. And in this image, with the addition of the paschal lamb, the lamb of revelation, there's the notation that this represents the end of time. In this image, we see, again, the eight-spoked wheel at the top. And I should perhaps explain why the eight-spoked wheel is so important. In the sky, there's a great cross that does not move, and it's formed by from the center of the galaxy to the edge of the galaxy, and from the center point of our celestial equator to the southern point of the celestial equator. That's the divine cross. Down here on the ground, we have the mundane cross that is formed by the angles between equinox and solstice and so forth. So the eight-armed cross, the eight-armed, eight-rayed star, the eight-armed cross, the eight-wheeled spoke, represents the alignment in space and time of the divine cross above and the terrestrial mundane cross below. Now, curiously enough, this alignment only happens once every 13,000 years. These crosses have not aligned since 11,000 BCE, roughly 13,000 years ago, meaning the phenomenon is now poised to occur again. The next image in the series is the end all and be all of the whole sequence. It shows the exact time when the apocalypse is going to happen. At the top we see our alignment of divine cross and terrestrial cross. Below that we see three eclipses connected to an eclipse.